Hi, my name is Brooke Patterson and I graduated in December 2020 with a bachelor's degree in history from Michigan Tech. Welcome to my research presentation, Tracing Gregoryville Labor, Second Generation French Canadians in Lake Linden, Michigan. I'd like to start by recognizing my advisors, Dr. Mark Rhodes and Dr. Sarah Scarlett from the Social Sciences Department here at Michigan Tech and the Deb League Foundation for funding this project. Also, this research is part of a larger international research project called Three Centuries of Francophone Migration in North America, 1740 to 1940, funded by the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada, or SHRC for short, and directed at Michigan Tech by Dr. Don Lafrenier in the Geospatial Research Facility. Joseph Gregoire came from St. John, Quebec to the Keweenaw and established one of the first successful lumber mills in the region. Previous research by local historian Clarence Monet helped me identify the additional families that followed Joseph Gregoire to work for him in Gregoryville, the town that he built. My research follows these mill workers and the descendants who stayed in the Keweenaw over two generations to assess their social mobility over time. The main point of comparison between these groups is occupation. In addition to employment, I mapped a small sample of French Canadians to better understand how they fit into the landscape of Gregoryville and Lake Linden. So in order to compare the two generations of French Canadians in the hopes of beginning to understand their social mobility, each individual could be found in both the 1880 and 1900 census was grouped by their occupation. These groups displayed in the two pie charts for each year, 1880 and 1900, have the individuals in either general labor, lumber, mining, agriculture, white collar, or other. Besides the census, I utilize the Lake Linden City directories and the online resource familysearch.com. Because each census did not provide addresses, the map I created to show where some of the descendants lived is based solely on city directories. Therefore, only 28% of the sample included in the occupational breakdown for the year 1900 had an address listed, and about 93% of those with an address are visible on the map. To view the map in more detail, there's a QR code available in the upper right-hand corner of the map. This will allow you to click on each point and discover where a specific individual lived, as well as their occupation, age, and birthplace. I expected that between 1880 and 1900, the second generation would move from the lumber industry to, into mining, but my investigation shows that both generations had a large range of jobs. This leads me to believe that French Canadian population adapted to the fast changing job market in order to stay in the area after the lumber mill closed. The map follows the same logic of adapting to the environment instead of crowding together in tight knit ethnically homogenous neighborhoods. Each census provided a general sense of each person's occupation, but without additional sources available to me, I was forced to include a general labor category when assigning each person to their respective group. Due to this lack of availability, it is possible that more people were employed in the lumber or mining industries. Once COVID has passed, social mobility of q and French Canadians can be further assessed by taking stock of the housing in the area, it's my hope that I can continue to participate in this analysis as a graduate student here at Michigan Tech. It's also important to note that more data will become available once the census is mapped via the geospatial research facility. Aside from obvious Finnish culture that is present in the landscape, it is increasingly important to recognize other groups with less representation that may not have an obvious impact on the community at first glance though. The French Canadian culture isn't immediately apparent in the Keweenaw. Signs of surviving influence continue to linger in the form of signage, infrastructure, the continuation of customs practiced by the residents. The immigration experience is forever changing with regards to politics and popular opinion, but remains a cornerstone of American heritage and identity. Honoring this experience by striving to understand the lives of those who immigrate only serves to strengthen the American vision and its place in the world. Thank you for listening to my presentation.